Hello beautiful family, it's Stephen here, uh, Tuesday the 26th of March in the year 2023, 24 sorry, <laughs> alright I hope you are all well, I'm relatively all well, I'm um, still not feeling 100% but I'm strong enough to go preaching tomorrow because that's what I am, I'm a street preacher of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The only way that you can be saved with everlasting life, salvation for your soul, eternal security, a place in heaven, because without the Lord Jesus, you won't make it to heaven. So you must believe on Jesus Christ. I'm going to get this out of the way quickly, but I'm going to explain to you that what the Bible says is true. Romans 3.23, all have sinned and all come short of the glory of God. That's what it says in the Word of God. Romans 6, 23, it says, The wages, the end of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we've all broken God's commandments because sin is the violation of God's commandments. And uh, that's why God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever should believe on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is available to anybody and everybody who believes, no matter if you've done the most heinous crimes in this world, um, Jesus will not cast you away. He has promised not to turn anyone away who comes to him. All you have to do is get real, be truth, and believe the gospel and you will be saved. The gospel which is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 3 and 4, how that Christ died on that cross for all our sins according to the scriptures and he was buried and on the third day he rose again from the dead. And when you believe that in your heart, you know it's true that Jesus did that for you and you call upon him or confess Jesus as Lord, you will be saved. Romans 10 verse 9 to 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So be a whosoever, doesn't matter. You might think he won't accept you. Well, that, well that's nonsense because he, won't, he will accept you. Um, he wants none to perish. All can be saved. God wants all to be saved. And it's down to you to take a step of faith and reach out and lay hold of the gift of God, which is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. When you believe that Jesus is the Son of God who died for you on that cross, and rose again from the dead for all our sin, boom, you'll be saved with eternal salvation and security, and you will go up in the rapture. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm just gonna pray over this video. Dear loving Heavenly Father, I ask that you bless everybody watching this video. I pray you make the focus clear for your glory's sake. Lord God, I pray everybody to go away feeling encouraged, blessed, empowered, uh, holy fire coming upon them. I pray, Lord God, I pray all oppression around their minds, Lord God, to be lifted off them right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, I pray that, I pray you'd fill them with so much of your perfect love which casteth out fear. Lord God, and I pray you make your face shine upon them and bless them and keep them, Lord. Be gracious unto them. Lift up the beauty of your countenance upon them all. I give them peace in the name of Jesus and deliver and strengthen and heal them for your glory's sake, Jesus Christ. Even so. Amen. All right, beautiful family. So <laughs> my arm's aching a little bit. I'll just hold it out that way with one hand. Then I'll, I'll put it back on to me in a minute. But I just wanted to come on here. Uh, yes, so I'm a street preacher. I preach this gospel message that if you believe that Christ died for our sins, was buried and rose again from the dead, you will be saved. And I preach it on the streets. The um, day before yesterday I was in Leeds. But um, tomorrow I'm going, I, I went with Brother Rob. Brother Rob, another evangelist, came with me on uh, um, Sunday. And uh, this, but tomorrow Brother Stephen Gledhill is coming with me. And we're going to go, I don't know where we're going exactly yet, because I've only got just enough to get to York at the moment, and um, maybe a 
get a cup of tea, you know, so, well, at any rate, we'll be preaching in York at the very least. But if anybody would like to donate to this ministry to help me to get to the places we need to get to and, and to continue to minister to uh, the homeless and all the rest of it, then please look at the description box. There's a PayPal link in there if you would like to, only if you can afford to and uh, only if God puts it in your heart to do so. Okay, so thank you. Thank you for all your prayers, all of you who support me. Um, whatever way it is whether it's in prayer or or whether you donate thank you from the bottom of my heart i'm so grateful for you all so anyway so yeah so tomorrow i'm picking up you'll see me tomorrow morning at the train station well that's if the lord jesus christ doesn't come because we are so close to his coming uh, this world's going to get a rude awakening it really is because jesus christ is coming so you'll see me at the Scarborough train station tomorrow asking you if you'll pray for me, my beautiful family. Please pray for both, both me and Stephen Gledhill that s some people would come to the knowledge of salvation and that many seeds would be planted in people's hearts and that people would wake up to what plumbing time it is because uh, it, this is the time of the very end of the end of the end. Um, you know this, uh, I mean, what more do people need to see, to see clearly that we are in the end? I mean, the last few years should have been enough to wake up anybody to what time it is. Oh, it's difficult pointing this way, pointing that way. So, we're looking for our blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Saviour, Jesus Christ, Titus 2.13. He's going to descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 to 18. Jesus Christ is coming. Are you ready? Have you believed? Are you saved? Because that's the only thing that's required for you to be saved is believe. That's it. You don't earn your salvation or work for it. For by God's grace are we saved through faith and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. It's not, it's not of works lest any man should boast. So it's not by our own good works lest any man should boast. Aren't they, aren't they cute? I, I just love nature, me. So, so yes, we're, we're kept saved. We're not kept saved by good works that we do. They don't keep us saved. We're already saved, past tense. It's a done thing, a done deal. We're sealed until the day of redemption. So we're kept saved by the power of God's Spirit. And we're under the blood of Jesus. So was justified by the shed blood of Jesus, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. And God has cast our sin into the deepest part of the ocean. He's removed our sin as far as the east is from the west. And he'll never remember it again. That is your lifetime of sin removed. That is past, present and future. Yes, indeed. Yes, all sin, your lifetime, the blood of Jesus cleanseth us from all sin however let me get to the point some people say that this is uh, easy believism or we're just looking for we're just looking for escape because we believe in the pre-tribulation rapture we just want to escape too right we do <laughs> and, um, and we just uh, we, we just say we, we say past present and future uh, sins are, are cancelled out just so we can have a license to sin, you know? <laughs> We're not saying that. Sin grieves God, it grieves Holy Spirit. And repetitive sin, if, if we don't do something about it, God will, he'll, he'll, he'll chastise us, you know? He'll chastise us onto the right path, always. If we stray, well, listen, if you have just sinned, 
just know that he is faithful and true his name is faithful and true and that if we confess our sin he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness so if you have sinned you just get down on your knees and you say sorry lord and but do this one thing and that is when you ask for forgiveness when you acknowledge a sin in particular receive forgiveness and don't repeat it afterwards god's dealt with it have some faith that you've been forgiven i mean some people I li literally say that we don't we, we don't need to ask god for forgiveness when we sin because um it's already been covered by the blood of the lamb but i i i question that altogether of course we should acknowledge our sin to the Lord. I mean, the Lord's prayer is a good daily prayer. It says, well, there's two or three different accounts of the Lord's prayer, I think. Is it two or three? One says sins, the other says trespasses, but um, it's all the same. So you're asking God to forgive you your sin, you know, and, and, uh, and that as we forgive others, to forgive one another I know sometimes it's hard when people do terrible things to you but you've got to let it go let it go let it go ask God to help you to forgive because some people do some horrible nasty things to us uh, but we must forgive them I know it's hard and pray for them and then hand them over to leave them over to God to to deal with but forgive and you will be forgiven that's what Jesus Christ said. Except you forgive others their sins, your Heavenly Father will not forgive your sins. So if our sins are covered, but temporarily I believe they could not be forgiven in this life. But God won't remember them at the judgment seat of Christ. He won't remember our sin. It'll be burnt up as hay and stubble. And all our works which we did, which we thought we were doing correctly, which were done in the flesh or whatever, <coughs> be burnt up like hay and stubble. Anyway, I, I hope beautiful family you're okay. So I'm just uh, preparing myself for tomorrow because I'm I'm really, really, I feel in the spirit now actually. And um, I, I feel like tomorrow's an important day. Well, every preaching day is important, but when me and Steve, brother Stephen get together, I mean, Steve will go up to anybody and everybody, which is good. I mean, I'm not quite the same. Um, I do go up to people, but uh, he just goes up to everybody and he, he starts a good conversation off and I'll come along and we'll both uh, give scripture verses. I usually give the gospel as Steve's telling, telling them. I, Steve says, are you ready for Jesus? He's coming like this. And then I tell them how, how simple it is for them to be, believe and be saved and be taken up to heaven because it is simple it's not it's not complicated our god well he's uh he's made it so simple god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life that's it believe did you catch that believe it doesn't say god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that those who believe and keep up the good works and repent from every sin keep the sabbath keep the ten commandments shall have everlasting life it doesn't say that no it just says believe believe on the lord jesus christ and you will be saved that's it so guys i'm starting to feel a bit healthier except last night just before going into bed I laid on my side and I felt this great pain in my leg and so I got out of bed I thought what's causing that I took my pajamas down and looked on my leg a great big boil on the side of my leg <laughs> and it caused, it caused me a lot of pain so I made a compress anyway and with something called TCP and boy is it working first of all I heated up the boil in the shower to soften it and then I pressed this uh, press of t with antiseptic TCP on this compress 
and pus came out and it's uh, it's better <laughs> it's not gone but it's better but I think it I wonder why I'm got a great big boil on me I have no idea um, anyway I, I feel relatively okay still suffering back issues but I'm eating well I've, I've really stuck to this um, eating well juicing and all the rest of it I've stuck with it I've stuck with using this weight gain stuff I don't know it doesn't look to me like it's doing much to be honest because um, I look in the mirror and I don't feel like I look at uh, maybe slightly I've got a slight bit of meat on me but I eat so healthy you won't believe it this morning I, I made a I made a I made a juice oh, people messaging me I made a juice I, I, I put radishes in it I put a pummet of blueberries uh, in it uh, I put a carrot in it I put an apple in it I put uh, fresh ginger in it uh, what else did I put in it I put other stuff in it I put chilies in it fresh chilies then I put some of that cayenne pepper red, red hot pepper in it as well so I had that as a smoothie first and then I had figs mixed with um, uh, chai seed flax seed and sunflower seeds so as you can see I'm eating very healthy I can't always afford organic but Try my best, you know. What are these? Bluebells. Bluebells. How pretty they are. This is a nice little garden, this. In fact, let me just show you this pretty little garden that the council do. They do make quite a nice job, actually. So, yes, finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things in the name of Jesus Christ, that's Philippians, and ask God that you would produce the fruit of the Spirit. Remember, Jesus gave that, that uh, metaphor of us being trees. A good tree cannot produce evil fruits neither can a uh, corrupt tree bring forth good fruit a tree is known by his fruits so the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness and temperaments self-control that's temperaments basically you know being temper temperate temperate with things you know not doing things in excess and whatever you know like just have one glass of wine instead of ten <laughs> so anyway so yes all can be saved no matter who you are no matter what you've done Jesus will accept you just as you are but if you don't take that step of faith how are you gonna ever know you tell me if you're not saved and you're watching this you tell me what have you got to lose by taking a step of faith. What have you got to lose? Do you think that if you come to God, you, you, you're gonna be square and you're gonna be, you're gonna have no more joy and fun and all. That's, on the contrary, um, you'll have more joy. You'll have the, the joy of the Lord, which will strengthen you with all power and might. And, um, don't think that, that that it just means that you it doesn't mean God wants to change you who you are you don't want to change the person you are but Holy Spirit listen once you believe the gospel the Holy Spirit comes in that's God's own spirit and lives inside you that is the baptism of the Holy Spirit this spirit is called the spirit of truth which leadeth into all truth is also called the comforter so I pray the comforter come up, cometh upon you all in the name of Jesus Christ with tender loving forgivenesses and kindnesses and mercies in the name of Jesus Christ and make you bold and courageous bold as lions in the name of Jesus Christ for the glory of Jesus Christ Amen I'll point it this way guys so 
I'd make it a little bit of a longer video because, uh, well, I was told, well, I think it was about two years ago, I was told uh, that you've got to make it under 13 because the number 13 is the number of rebellion. So I, I took this advice and, and I found it wasn't true. I could do videos that were longer and stuff. So that's what I'm doing. Listen, if you're not saved, believe now. Because if you're ashamed of the Lord Jesus, he'll be ashamed of you. You won't make it into heaven. And instead you'll find yourself in hell. Some people tell me I shouldn't preach about hell. Some people say to me, oh, um, I, be I believe, but I don't believe the in the way you deliver your message like this. Well, I'm telling people the truth. There's not many people who will talk about hell. And I don't even like talking about it, but I have to. It will talk, we're commanded to warn one another. Hell is a place of outer darkness, where there is weeping and wailing, where there is gnashing of teeth, separated from God forever, where the worm never dies and the fire never goes out, utterly consumed with terrors. That's what the Bible says. And that's why we are we're all of us are telling you the gospel so that you'll believe, so that you don't end up down there and you don't get left behind to face the apocalypse. Because things might look all right where you are and business as usual, you walk into town, everyone's happy playing, playing and shopping. And, but do you realize it's gonna change just like that? Just remember how quickly, all of a sudden, they locked down the whole world. Well, it's gonna be the same. It's gonna be sudden. Sudden destruction shall come upon them, the Bible says. So get on board the Ark of Salvation. You've got nothing to lose except an old sinful nature, sinful lifestyle, sinful sin. And you've got nothing to lose, but you, you, you're not going to receive the, the end of sin, which is death, but life. Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. So speak Jesus' words and speak them because they are spirit and they are life. The living word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And remember, if you have faith, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to that cell phone tower, be uprooted and cast into the sea and it would obey you. And nothing will be. I just pray for the glory of Jesus Christ. Father God, you restore the footage. What's wrong with it? It's, well, if you had faith as small as a mustard seed, you could say to that mount where that cell phone tower is, uh, be removed and cast into the sea, and it would obey you. That's, that's all that's needed is mustard seed faith. So I'm preaching to myself as well. So take a step of faith. Like I said, you've got nothing to lose. And if you're saved, take a step of faith. Because we need to fight, wage a good warfare daily. Put on the whole armour of God. That you might be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. And having done all, to stand. Ephesians 6 verse 10. Jesus Christ is not about being religious. Jesus Christ is about love salvation he said a new commandment i give you that ye love one another even as i have loved thee so love ye one another by this shall men all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have love one to another love covers all sins love is the fulfilling of the law of god so this is what it's about I tell you something, you'll be glad, so glad that you made that decision. If you make that decision to, to uh, believe on the Lord Jesus, follow him. Jesus said, he that followeth me, he said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So, um, yeah. he said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand oh hello there you look a bit old oh i hope you're happy oh god bless you in the name of jesus oh 
Nice doggy, aren't you? <laughs> I love dogs. I worked in two homeless shelters for dogs, but abandoned dogs in Spain, and I've had dogs all my life since since I was 20, 21, something like that. And then 2000, December 2014, my last little dog died, and oh my gosh, I didn't want. I don't want to get another one. I thought I thought there's no point in getting another one because the rapture's going to be at hand. Now there's this debate about. Um, I know people are putting up videos saying that God will not rapture people's pets, right? I, I, I don't know about that. Take it to the Lord. Ask and you shall receive, Jesus said. You think about it. Jesus so loves you and all, and all that belongs to you. He loves you so much he was willing to go through that brutal death. Even if it was just for you, he would have done it. So that's how much he loves you and he loves his people. So he doesn't want you to be in a panic worrying about your dogs. Um, I believe personally that yes, they will go up in the rapture. That's what I personally believe. And he didn't say that, but you know, it just says that we which are alive and remain should be caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. But, um, God doesn't, you know, he loves you so much. Do you think that he's going to allow you to fret and worry about your dogs and they're going to be left behind? You know what I mean? What do you think? Please put it in the comment section. Because God loves you so much, you know, and I believe he loves you, the dogs as well. And he knows that you love them. So, you know, he's, he said he will not forsake you. So when you get to heaven, you'll say to him, if, if, if he left your pets behind, you said, you promised never to forsake me, but my pets are forsaken, and now and now they're being eaten by zombies, you know? I can't see it myself. I think God will take his, God's born-again people and their animals up into heaven. But you leave it in the comment section what you think. Right, okay, I'm going to get off, guys. I might do another video later. Um, I've, since I've been looking after myself a lot better, I feel better, you know? All these juices and smoothies. Look after yourself, guys, because uh, we've been, we've got this stuff being dumped on us every single day. And then we've got, and then we're under an attack by the prince of the power of the air, the air waves. So, so be in prayer, stay in the word of God, remain in his love. That's what he said, remain in the love of God. His perfect love. So right, okay then. So yes, we're going preaching tomorrow. You'll see me at the station in the morning, um, asking for prayers. I thank you all again. All you faithful people have prayed and supported us and stuck by me, even when it looked like I was done for. You stuck by me and you helped me. What a family. We belong to such a big family. You might be on your own, but you're born again, but you belong to a big family, and we're all members of one another. So, he puts the solitary in families, so the fatherless in families. So, he's so gracious, he's so faithful and true. He says, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. Come Lord Jesus, we love you, we bless you, we praise your holy name, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We say come quickly now, through Jesus Christ, amen. So yes, I believe this uh, eclipse has something to do with, uh... listen, if it's just a warning, like it was in Jonah's day, a warning, um, but they repented in Jonah's day, so God repented him of the evil that he was going to bring upon Nineveh. But can you see the USA repenting? You know? Can you see them repenting and turning back to the Lord? I don't. So I believe this could be a sign of impending uh, destruction and judgment upon America. I hope not, but we're living in the end times, so it could be could be also the rapture day could be please don't anybody tell me I said it will definitely be because I'm not saying that 
I've said it once, it once, and I, that was because I was coerced by two other people into setting a date for, for judgment on America, which was a few years ago, and I shouldn't have done it. And um, that was because I was being a people pleaser. So we do make mistakes. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm just gonna do what God tells me to do. And he wants me to tell people the gospel now so that they will just get saved. I'm not here to disciple people or anything like that. I'm here to preach the gospel only. That if people believe that, they're saved forever, that's all. That's all I'm here to do. And to show the love of God freely. Freely you have received, freely give. And with the measure you use for giving, it will be measured back to you. Whatever you give shall be given back to you, full measure, pressed down. Running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the measure you use, it shall be measured back to you again. So, all right, beautiful family, I love you very much. I'm just about to stick one of a... I found a few stickers, only about ten. So I'm going to stick one real high up there so these people can't take it off. <laughs> and he says, Jesus Christ is coming. Because he is. Any moments, he promised that he would come. So why people are saying he's not coming now or something, I don't know. Get ready. Be ready. If, if you believe, you're ready. But watch. Watch. Because he's coming. All right, I'm sorry if I'm shouting or I seem angry. I'm not angry. <laughs> all right. I love you all. See you tomorrow at the train station. Please pray for us, family. Me and brother Stephen Gledhill. I love you all very much. See you above all this chemtrail filth in the third heaven in white robes any moment now.